And what reduce file size would do is it would strip the image, strip the images down to their lowest quality, throw away all the information. Well, the problem is is that it takes out too much information. This particular file may be a, a meg and a half, and I just want to bring it down, you know, just under a megabyte. So I don't have the reduced file size anymore in Acrobat 9 because you had no control over it. But funny enough, in Acrobat 8, you had the same thing we have in Acrobat 9, which is the PDF Optimizer. PDF Optimizer acts like distiller inside of Acrobat. Now we use Distiller to export a file and we choose the settings in Distiller to distill it into a PDF. PDF Optimizer is literally redistilling a PDF file that you've made. The Optimizer will not let you get back information that has been written out of the file, but what you can do is you can then go in here and you can redistill your file to either throw more information away or make it compatible with other versions. So right now, I know that this file is 1.4 megs, and I want to reduce the size down so that it gets a little bit smaller here. And I can go in here, and I can set you know, my JPEG quality to very low quality images here. I can set my um, downsampling so that it, instead of being 200 pixels per inch, I can say 100. Reduce the size of that, you know, say low quality JPEGs here, that kind of thing. And I can also say, you know, make this compatible with Acrobat 6 and newer. So I can change the compatibility here. I can click on my images. I can click on my fonts. I could take out fonts that are embedded in there so that it's just going to render on screen without having to retain any of the information here. And they you know, do take up a little bit of space. I don't have any transparency issues here. I can go through and discard objects that are in here and do general cleanup. Now, going through and discard objects and user data and cleanup, this is something that you'd really have to know exactly what you're doing. If you throw it away, you gain little bits and pieces of space. But mainly, the images and the fonts are going to take up the space. Well, how much space do they really take up here? We click on the Audit Space Usage button. And this is going to tell us, by percentage, the images are taking up 93% of the image size. So that's where I'm going to focus my main attention on to reduce that so that they look good. And I can do it in increments. And then I can um, optimize this. And everything else really isn't that much isn't that relevant. So I click OK. And the images, I'm going to downsample here. And if I click OK, I'm going to save this to my desktop here. And I'm going to call this, yes, I want to replace this. And it gives me a warning here that some of the images weren't downsampled. And now I can go into my file here. And I'm going to look at this catalog. And I'm going to get info on this. And it was 524K here. And sure enough, these were the pages before 1.4 megs, and I reduced the file to size down to 524K by using the PDF optimizer. If I had done, used in Acrobat 8, used the reduced file size, it probably would have gone down to like 200 or 300K, but I would have had no control over what it threw away. It was just a wholesale um, change to it. For upcoming topics, you can always go to creativetext.com which I will do now, creativetext.com, and go to the, uh, the training tab in the creativetext.com website, click on that, and this will have a list of all the upcoming workshops. And we try to keep this updated, and we try to schedule a couple months ahead. So if you notice, in December, we are doing a three-part series on PDFs. Today is pre-flighting and preparing PDFs for printing. Next week is designing PDF forms in Acrobat, or designing PDF forms in Adobe InDesign. The week after that is creating interactive PDFs. These are a really popular series. And then in January, we have got uh, a special focus on saving time with InDesign style sheets, retouching skin in Photoshop CS4. This is a really popular topic that Jason has led before. It's all updated for CS4. And I want you to notice we have, at the third week of every month, we have got this item called Suggest a Workshop Topic. We leave part of our schedule open a month ahead of time or two months ahead of time for people to suggest. So if you click on that, you can actually go to a page where we allow you to suggest a topic. Jason puts these together every month, and this is where we get our new material. We've already had a couple people in here. We've had one person in the audience uh, suggest that we cover uh, Fireworks as a web development tool for, for print designers. Um, we've, we've actually had another request for doing kind of HTML email 
um, overview. So if you have a topic that you would love to see us cover, please suggest it. You know, these, these are written for you, and hopefully we're going to be able to uh, accommodate your needs. And then in February there's more, and we don't have the, uh, the March schedule up yet.